Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. So it's great to have this year coming. New expectations, hoping that everything will be fine this year. So the reflection for tonight, it's about transmission of, of thought. So uh, I think that uh, thinking, when you think so, let I just make I thinking, I, I think. So thinking, it's something quite different. If you try to stop thinking for just a second, it's quite tough, right? So, and if you think where the thinking, where, the, where your thought is going when you think, it's going somewhere, right? Because your thinking, your, your thought is sometimes trying to communicate to yourself, sometimes trying to communicate to others, some tr sometimes trying to communicate with, with your mentors, the spirits that could help you in some way. So let's reflect here. The idea here is not to teach you how to transmit your, your thought. The idea here is for us to understand the mechanism behind the transmission of thought and how we can improve the way that we are thinking. So once we improve the way that we are thinking, we are gonna improve our thoughts and then we are gonna improve the, our environment around us. So that's the idea here. Transmission of thought, is it possible? Can anyone have an answer here? Is it possible? Yes or no? Yes. Or maybe? Yes. yes. Did you try to transmit your thought once? Did you try it? Did you try it? Did it, did it work? Sometimes. Sometimes, right? So it's perfect sense. So let's see what, uh, what Kardec presented to us here. What is going on? Oh. So let's see what Kardec, the great Alan Kardec, brought to us in the medium's book about this thing. So a specific question, direct question. Could two persons, by invoking each other, transmit their thoughts and thus correspond? So his answer was yes. It's not maybe. And this human telegraphy will someday be a universal men's of correspondence. So uh, human telegraphy, uh, the modern term for this one is telepathy. So I think most of you have heard about telepathy, right? That's the same thing. Because at this time in 1861, the term telepathy didn't exist. It was created by, by Frederick Myers in 1882. Okay, Frederick Myers was not a spiritist. He was a, a founder of the, the London Society of Psychology. So you see pretty aligned. So Kardec presented that question 20, 27 years before the London Society of Psychology defined that term. So it's a reality. For sure, we can transmit our thought. Okay, so absolutely right. So let's understand that thing, but first of all, let me, let me share with you the references if you wanna go deeper on that. So we've got one reference in the Spiritist Review, October 1864. We've got a specific article uh, talking about that. And this specific article, they present a case. It's a, it's a, it's a case study about the transmission of thought. Okay, so it's very interesting to take a look into that. I think it's about three or four pages only, easy to read. So it's an example, a practical example, dated of 1864. This one is much more complex, but it's readable. It's the mechanism of mediumship, where Andre Luis presented the ways of transmitting the thought. And this book right here, it's a, it's a fantastic one. Because if you see here, it was, uh, it was brought to us from the spirit of André Luiz by Chico Xavier and Valdo Vieira. 
they were both Brazilian mediums, and they wrote, each one wrote a different chapter. I'm not sure if Chico Xavier wrote the, the, the odd ones and uh, Valdo Vieira wrote the, the even ones, and they were not in the same city. They were in separate city, far away from each other. They received the message from Andrea Luiz and they, they make these writings and brought this fantastic book. I think it's available here in our bookstore if you're interested. So if you wanna go deeper in this knowledge, so these are additional references besides the five books brought by, by Alain Kardec, right? The Spirit's Book, the Medium's Book, uh, the Gospel According to Spiritism, uh, heaven and Hell, and the Genesis. So those five books are important for us to understand that thing. But these additional references are pretty good if you want to go deeper. So to understand the, the thought, we need to understand brain waves. You know that each of us, we've got a brain for sure, right? If you are using not well, it's up to you, but it's yours. It's your brain. And each of each of us, we transmit waves from the brain, like a radio, okay? I think you see the, the exam that we put some, some electrodes here, like a, like a cover here, like a cap, and they detect the, the brain waves, okay? So your brain is capable of transmitting waves. Transmitting waves is the same thing that a radio is using to transmit a signal, to transmit a voice, or to transmit an image, a video. But is those brain waves related to the, the transmission of thought? Let's understand first what is a brain wave, because this is only in the material world. What we're gonna show you here, it's in the material world. Let's hear that short film here. From Minute Earth. Animals move in all kinds of ways. But one thing all that motion has in common is rhythm. So it's not really that surprising that the simple neural circuits driving these motions are basically little rhythm machines with electrical patterns that give rise to coordinated motion. Perhaps more surprising is that crazy complex neural circuits that aren't dedicated to movement also have rhythm. All over our brains all the time, millions of neurons are syncing up, sometimes for just a fraction of a second, and generating electrical ups and downs that we can record as brain waves. In healthy brains, these waves are really consistent. For instance, during normal waking activity, your brain produces a pattern called the beta rhythm. And in deep asleep, it generates a slower delta rhythm. In unhealthy brains, on the other hand, we see abnormal brain waves, which suggests that the rhythms do something important. The question is, what? One of brainwave's roles seems to have to do with long-term memory. During one stage of sleep, short, powerful rhythms deep in the brain trigger the same sequences of neurons that were active before sleep, creating lasting connections between them. We found that without these rhythms, certain kinds of memories can't form. We have lots of other ideas about what exactly brainwaves do, from holding information like phone numbers in our minds to dictating whether we're even conscious. Or maybe the rhythms in our brains are even more important than that. Maybe their main function is to keep time for the brain, to keep all the parts sufficiently synchronized so that they can work together. Synchrony in the brain not only enables groups of neurons to fire together and send a strong, clear signal from one part of the brain to another, it tunes different parts of the brain into the same frequencies, coordinating the signals between them. In some ways, it's crazy to think that the incredible things our brains do rely on repeating, yet fleeting, patterns of electrical activity. But on the other hand, generating rhythms is sort of what nervous systems evolved to do in the first place. We really can't get anywhere without them. I think all of us believe on that, right? So our brain transmits waves. So is this the, the thought that we are talking about? No. No, it's not. Because it's in the material world. It's not in the spiritual world. The thought is in the spiritual world. This thing happened in the material world. Because look at that. The waves that we are generating here, they are pretty low power. They cannot reach you. And we need to put electrodes here to detect those waves. 
but it's similar to this thing, okay? So let's understand a little bit about, about signal transmission and reception, okay, before we move forward. Signal transmission and, and, re and reception, I think all of us here know that thing, this graph here. So you've got a microphone, you've got a transmitter. So receive your voice, modulates your voice, power to the antenna. The antenna send the, the radio frequency. It's received by a, by, a, by a receiver in the antenna. The receiver demodulates the signal and then you can hear the sound or receive a video. Okay, that's the process for any kind of transmission, even in your cell phone, even in your telephone, whatever, even, even if I'm talking. The same way that I'm talking voice. In voice, I'm sending my voice here, it vibrates the, 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 the air here. The air reach your, your ear, and then you can understand what I'm talking, okay? So that's the process. But does this process, transmission and reception, apply to thought on both the material and the spiritual world? That's the question here that you're gonna try to clarify. It's pretty clear in the material world. We've got that thing, we've got the cell phone, we've got the, the radio in your car, that's the same thing. But what about in the spiritual world? Let's understand a little bit deeper a difference between the material world and the, and the spiritual world. Here, so imagine if you got a, if you got a hope tied to the wall. If you try to create a, some kind of impulse in this hope, it will create a wave, right? If I increase that thing, it will increase the frequency. That is what being shown here. What we can hear uh, by our ear, it's limited only to this frequency right here, around 20 hertz to 20K, something like that. So dogs, for example, they can hear a little bit higher frequency. So that's the reason sometimes your dog is feeling something, but you're not listening to something. So you've got pro if you've got problems in your ear, sometimes you've got not all the frequencies here. So that's what you, when you make a test about audition, so you see if you can hear all this frequency. So here you perceive that only this part here is audible. What happened to the rest of the, the frequencies? It exists, but you don't hear. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It's the same of thought in the spirit world, okay? You don't see, you don't feel it sometimes, but it exists. It's the same thing. Look at that, when you, are, when you are reincarnated here in the material world, you receive a body. So your, your spirit receives a body. So this limits the perception of the spirit. It's the same thing, it's analog for you if you dive, if you get a deep dive suit, so you put the helmet, you cannot listen so well, you cannot see so well. It's the same thing. A spirit to incarnate is like a deep diving in a very dense material world, right? So we got this limitation in what we are hearing. So did you feel the difference between here, the material world and the spiritual world? The same thing for the visual thing. We cannot see everything because we are only limited to the visible part of the, the, the electromagnetic spectrum. We can only see the colors right here, presented like a rainbow here. So, but what about this microwave? What about the radio wave? What about the, the, the UV that the sun is sending to us? What about the x-rays? What about the gamma? They all exist, but we are very limited, right? We can only see this range right here, right? This is what happened in the material world. So when you go to the spiritual world, the transmission and reception is similar, but the frequencies and so quite different. So let's understand a bit what is a, a thought. 
A thought is an energy, okay? It can be spread both to outside and to inside. Make sense? We can send it, but we can also absorb. That's what we mention sometimes, that don't put it inside. Throw it away. Your emotions. Sometimes you keep your emotions. You are sending your thoughts to inside. That could cause you a problem, right? In the same way, if you like to talk to someone using your thought, you're going to send your energy to outside. When you think about someone, right? You're going to send good energies to someone. Let's see if your kid is doing a very tough exam. You'd like to send good energy for him. What are you going to do? You're going to think about him. You're going to think about him sending him a good energy. That's a transmission of thought, right? So in the book, in this other book from Chico Xavier and Valdo Vieira uh, that was brought, it's from Andrea Luiz as well. In this book, Evolution in Two Worlds, Andrea Luiz called it this energy that we mentioned about thought as a mental fluid. So it's, think like a mental fluid, right? Like a water flowing, it's a mental fluid. Also in this book, Universe and Life, by Aureo, he named it the same thing as a mind magnetic fluid. It's the same thing. This, the different names, but it's the same thing. It's the energy from our thinking. And look at that. But the good thing here is that it explains that this exteriorization occurs by electromagnetic waves. The same way that we mentioned for the material world, it also happened in the spiritual world. Waves. We think, we put power in the, in the thought, it creates a wave, and then it goes. Okay? Any questions here? Feel free to ask any questions. I think we've got time. So sometimes it's a little bit complex, but I'm trying to bring as simple as possible. The process of thought transmission. Kardec, in chapter 27, uh, in the book Gospel According to Spiritism, in the chapter that he mentioned, ask and it shall be given. So I think you, you listen a lot. So if you think about something, if you ask about something, you're going to receive something, right? So for example, if I say all the time, I need patience, I need patience, I need patience. Maybe sometimes they, they put you in a traffic jam to teach you how to be patient, right? So be careful on what you're asking, right? Uh, so what is the process for thought transmission? So we are here embedded in, a, in the air, in the atmosphere, right? But besides that, I think we've got this universal fluid. So everything is immersed in the universal fluid. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a stupidity from God if he created this huge universe empty. It's not empty. It's populated by something. And this something is, is the universal fluid. So everything, incarnated and disincarnated, we are all immersed in this fluid. Like we are in the atmosphere, we are also in, uh, immersed in this fluid. The universal, when we think, this universal fluid receives a push, an impulse, okay? It's like I'm talking. I'm talking, I'm creating an impulse in the air. So when you think, you create an impulse in the universal fluid, similar to our, to our receiving a sound impulse, the same thing. So this impulse, extends to the infinity. That's a huge difference between the material world because in the material world, it attenuates. If I'm talking here without this thing, the people at the back of the room cannot hear so well because I need to increase my voice. I need to increase the power to reach them there because there is an attenuation in the sound. Like the, the radio, you cannot listen to radio 
that is being transmitted here in Orlando, a radio that if you are in California, I'm saying not using satellites, but using an earth wave, because it will attenuate. You need so much power that's not possible. It's, uh, let's say, not, not possible. It's not affordable to have this huge transmitter to send waves to there. So in the old radios, I'm an old guy, in the old radios that we, we used to listen, AM, for example, we can listen uh, stations from Europe and Brazil or here in the US, you can listen stations from the other side of the world, but that's a different transmission because it's, it goes to the ionosphere, reflect there and go, and it goes back to the earth. So, okay, but needs a huge power to make this transmission. So connection between beings, incarnated or disincarnated, our thinking, our thoughts, affects not only the incarnated ones. We can, we can talk to incarnated and also to disincarnated. It's just transmitting our thought because we are all immersed in the same fluid. So the, it's made by means of a fluidic current, transmitting the thought to each other and vice versa. So I think most of you uh, were thinking about someone and then by suddenly you receive a call from this person. So I made the statistics and I talked to 10 people, nine of them had that experience before. So you talk to, you're thinking about, oh, this guy right here, and if receive a call from him, what happened? So it's because you were thinking on him, he received that message, and then, okay, let me communicate with him, okay? So the energy of this fluidic current is proportional to the strength, to the power that we give to the thought. As much power, as, as much intense is the, is the thought, the chances to reach the other one, you got a, a higher likelihood to reach the other one. Make sense? Make sense? So that's the, that transmission. I think most of you practice that thing already. You think about someone, you send good vibes, you send good energy. Can I give you an example? Uh, stadium, sports. So if you go to a sports game in, a, in the arena or in the stadium, so the fans will send thoughts to the players. So that's the advantage when you're playing home. So playing home is not because of the crowd screaming. It's because the thoughts that they are transmitting to the players are aligned to the objectives of the, of the players to win. Make sense? So that's the reason the importance of playing at home and playing against another team in their home. When you play in their home, what happened there? The fans around all the thoughts are sending power against them. Make sense? Okay, but why telepathy is not ostensibly practiced nowadays? Can someone guess? Because it should be, because we know we can do that, right? Kardec mentioned that thing, we practice that, but why it's not so ostensible? It's much easier for us to get the cell phone and call someone. Why? Because if we are doing that thing frequently, we don't need the cell phone anymore, right? Except to search for the internet, for social networking, but to talk to someone, just thinking, exchange the, the message with them. But why we are not doing this thing nowadays? Maybe because nobody's making money with it. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned about, it's a, it's a good point, but actually this is a reflection of our maturity. We are not so mature. Imagine if you're capable of bothering someone. You, uh, imagine. So using the cell phone, think about the, the using of a cell phone or a telephone, right? So we bother the others. We poke the others. We call the others. So we need to be more mature to be capable on having this capability ostensibly. Right? 
So do you think we are more mature now than 50 years ago when we didn't have the cell phones? What do you think? So are we, are we going backwards or are we going forward? Yeah, but what is the difference by the time that we didn't have a cell phone? And nowadays, we just need a, a phone, plug it in the wall to talk to someone, right? So the maturity there, did we change? Of course not. Because remember the days that we found an open telephone, we get the phone and call to someone. So a huge line was created because the cell phone is open. So a public telephone right, in the street. We don't see public, tele public telephones anymore in the street. But if someone spread the word that it's an open telephone, that you do not need to pay anything to call to someone, you're going to see a huge line behind this public telephone, right? It's everywhere in the world, not here in the US, in Brazil, in Europe. So I've been in Europe in the, in the 80s, and it's quite tough to talk to someone at this time in the 80s, you need to go to a public phone, buy a card, put a card, and try to talk, and very expensive. So I've been in London, and there was a huge line be behind one cabin, and the, the, ca the, the cabin right behind of this one was empty. So I went to the huge line and asked if there is a problem with the, the phone. No, no, it's because this one is for free. So are we mature at that time? Of course not. We are not so mature. We need to improve a little bit to get this capability more frequent. But look at that. Look at what Kardec mentioned to us. It is with some persons, but not with everyone. Humans must purify themselves in order that their spirit may be disengaged from, from, from the material, from the material world, from, the, from matter. Got it? So that's the idea. We need to get more maturity. But we are practicing. We are getting better. And I think the cell phone is to test us on that thing. Right? Testing us. So how many, how many friendship, uh, uh, friendships were destroyed by social network? So I think it's for us to practice more on that thing. Right? Respect each other. Live in harmony. OK? So that's one reason. Another question that, that, could, uh, that could raise in our hands is uh, why we don't have a technology? So we just need to put a cap and think. Why we don't have a technology for that? So a lot of research, look at the cell phone. A lot of technology is why. Can someone guess why we don't have a technology here that we just wear a cap? and communicate by the thought. It's because the vast majority of the scientific research is made in the material world. They don't do so much research in the universal fluid. Because unfortunately, our scientists is thinking about the material world, most of them. It's changing. We can see good research performing in the universal fluid, but it's so small comparing to the, to, the other, to the other kind of research. And that's a good question here is that, do we really need to have this capacity like a normal situation nowadays? That's what I said. It's in our, in our current evolution, in our, at this moment in our evolution process. I don't think that this will help us, right? So the spirits are controlling our evolution, right? So they know what we need to evolve ourselves. We don't need that thing right now, but it's a capacity that we are acquiring, okay? Talking about thinking, our thought. Our thought influences the psychosphere. Psychosphere is a term brought to us by Andrea Luis, that every, every, everything that, uh, that we think in something, it will affect the sphere, the psychosphere around us. So if you are down, this will create a, 
a sphere down. If you are happy, you can express that thing just by your psychosphere, right? So what does that mean? It's the energy hollow that surrounds us. So all of us, we have that. We have this energy around us. So that's the, sometimes you've got, you feel so good when you meet someone because his energy is aligned with yours. Sometimes you feel mm, this something, it's weird. It's because, it's not because the guy is in bad energy. It's because his energy is not aligned with yours. So it seems like it's reflecting. So it's a projection of our conscience, of, your, of our consciousness and generating an energy field around us, right? And that will be positive and negative. I think most of you try that experience as well. When you're talking to someone that is complaining all the time, oh, oh this guy is complaining, he's complaining, he's complaining. This creates around you some kind of, oh, I don't want to hear someone complaining. So I want to hear someone talking about good things, my side. So that's a psychosphere influenced each other. It's the thinking, transmission of thinking. How can we improve our psychosphere? So the spirits are teaching us the way that we can improve. First of all, it's performing our self-analysis, self-knowledge is very important to understand what is what I'm doing here, what I need to improve, and replace bad thoughts. That's a technique that is great. When you start to think in a bad thought, a bad thought, try to replace it by a good thought. Replace it. And so this bad thought will insist on coming, replace it. So it's an internal fight, right? Replace it, practice, practice. Oh, it's a bad thought, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that thing. No, replace it. I'm gonna do that. I study hard. I'm gonna pass in this exam. So if you go to the exam and think, oh, this exam is gonna be tough, I'm not gonna pass. What happened to your psychosphere? Psst. This will send energy to inside of you, and then it will create a bad condition. You're playing against yourself. Instead of playing in favor, you're playing against. So what, why are you doing that? Right? So the healthy psychosphere goes through the way in good acting, good interacting, not the way that we are playing, and thinking, okay? Thinking, it's important. Thinking will affect directly the psychosphere. And basic, basic suggestion here, following Jesus' teachings. So live in harmony with one another. So why we cannot live in harmony with one another? So we've got different, different uh, perspectives of the world, but we should respect each other, right? It's only a question of respecting. Live in harmony, right? Any questions here? Joana de Angelis. Joana de Angelis is a. Uh, she has a, a psychological series, and she presents a lot of stuffs about thinking, good thinking, and uh, uh, her knowledge was brought to us by Divaldo Franco. Joana de Angelis is uh, is the mentor of Divaldo Franco, and this book here, Happy Life, that we used to present here. Uh, some chapters every Thursday before the, before the meeting here. So Joana de Angelis brought two topics here in chapter 86 and chapter uh, 165. Strive to remain at peace. Look at that. Yourself. Strive to remain at peace. Cultivating good thoughts which will provide you with priceless benefits. Insight. Right? Remember that we talked in the beginning that when you think, it's the energy flowing outside and inside. 
So remain at peace. What is bothering you? Self-knowledge. Try to understand what is bothering you. What is bothering me? Try to fix it. Try to replace it. Right? Concentrate your way of thinking to pleasant, wholesome, optimistic questions and you will live under their reflection, enjoying the well-being that we will spread to others and producing peace outside. Right? Should be simple if we practice. If we don't practice, it's not simple. It's like any sports. If you practice, you get muscles. We need to practice there. Just, just remember that. Replace bad thing. So re replace a bad thought. Replace by a good thought. Right? So in the Spirit's book, is the basic book for the Spiritism, where Kadek presented more than a thousand questions about the spirit, about the spiritism, and was answered by different spirits. One question, pretty straightforward, related to uh, transmission of, of thought. How comes if uh, sorry, if two if that two persons perfectly awaken often have the same thought at the same moment? It's pretty common that thing, right? We can see some researchers here that we have in the, in the world. People are thinking about the same subject at the same time in different places. Someone from the spiritual world is sending them thinking, intuition, to prepare this kind of research because this research will improve something, right? It's because two spirits who are in sympathy may communicate. Sympathy means that uh, it's a, uh, how can I say, your energy that you are sending, it's aligned to the energy for him to receive. So that's the empathy. It's pretty common when we listen, oh, I don't like this guy or something like that. It's not because of the, the past life you had an issue with him. No, not a problem, not at all. Sometimes it's not. It's because your energy it's not aligned to the energy that he is prepared to receive. That's it. It's like a radio. When you transmit, if you don't set in the dial the right station, you're not going to receive it. It's the same thing. Right? So, uh, who are in sympathy may communicate their thought to each other even when the body is not asleep. There is between the spirits a communication of thoughts which sometimes enables two persons to see and understand one another without having any need of human speech. They may be said to speak the language of spirits. So transmission of thought is made by spirit to spirit. We've got a spirit incarnated here. We've got spirits disincarnated. The transmission of thought is spirit to spirit, which is different from the material world. Okay? Any questions here? So, thanks for your attention. Hope that this helped on, on your studies, on your reflections. Thank you. <laughs>